Good morning, folks. On the left, you see what the sun looked like a year ago, and on the right, we see what it looks like today. We are just beginning the rise to sunspot maximum, and you can see that when the sun wakes up, it's not at all ambiguous. We've gone now from ionized iron to ionized helium here, where the shift is equally apparent. Now let's go ahead and see the last day of science, but we'll start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find those last 24 hours were much calmer. No eruptions or flaring, we don't see much in the way of coronal holes either. If anything, the slight fluctuations of the solar wind stream are all there is to note. Plasma speed is variable and above average, which results in the KP index being up off the floor, even if not in the scary range. Quick look at yesterday's sunspot picture, where we had focused on the development behind the largest umbra, but that has largely decayed today, both at the penumbra and trailing behind. We've got development slightly to the south, we'll monitor today. Let's go from beneath our feet out into deep space, starting with pre-seismic signals. I don't have the exact number, but we're pretty close to 500 papers now from the community on this topic. It's the subject of the AGU's textbook on pre-earthquake electromagnetism and Chapter 7 of our textbook as well. Shifting only slightly to where climate patterns are not treating everyone fairly, green is where plant productivity relative to rainfall is increasing and pink and purple is where it is decreasing. Great news for Australia, parts of Brazil and the U.S. breadbasket, not so good in other places. Up next is an excellent bit of detail on electrostatic dynamics of water in the atmosphere. Folks, this is why cosmic rays directly influence cloud cover and why solar particles do as well through the global electric circuit and geomagnetic systems. This is the energetic coupling foundation that is largely missed in the chemical and hydrodynamic modeling of the climate. For those with our textbook, that's chapter 5. Let's go next to space and land on the moon where they say they want to pull oxygen from the lunar surface material. A very good read, good math and theory and imagination, but we are a bit away from capability there. But speaking of imagination, a couple scientists are using Hubble images to hypothesize that dark matter might have been stripped from certain galaxies and tidal forcing. They saw no actual evidence of dark matter, just a potential interaction with a nearby galaxy, which could easily be a radio bridge. But this desperate Hail Mary of dark matter theorists is worth sharing because they decided to include part of the lost light of Hubble catalog. This was actually what set off the flurry of studies confirming that the extra normal matter is found right around the galaxies, exactly where the dark matter halos were supposed to be. Stepping one step further down that line, and we find that the models of galaxies continue to fail pretty much every time we get a new perspective or piece of technology. Sophia here studying quasar behavior and the feedback on their hosts, turns out for the millionth time in a row, scientists are surprised by the findings and are needing to revise their models. Quick Q&A on our campground design contest. Yes, submit as many as you want. It's free. The theme or layout is entirely up to you, but we do suggest something in line with the observers rather than, say, Little Mermaid theme. There is obviously quite a bit going on behind the scenes here with lots of chances for you to get involved. It's coming. We greatly appreciate all of your support. Get our books and other gear at otf.sales.com, some discounts for the holiday over there, and website members at suspiciousobservers.org. The weekly Fly on the Wall podcast does occur today. I am noticing that observers either hate it or love, love, love it, largely depending on your bumper stickers. Wink. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.